Ward's gonna have to soul shackle this guy. It's not even gonna matter. It's still keep going for the kills. The hook on the double as he goes right through the team and threads the needle. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the North American League Championship Series. We're coming to you live in front of this incredible audience with more Week 6 Summer Split action. Just for you, we've reached the halfway point of this split, and it's like a wild shootout with everything up for grabs. Hello, I'm Rivington Bison the third, and joining me at the analyst desk are birthday boy Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, Joshua Jat Leesman, and David Turley. That's David Freak Turley, for all of you out there who don't know. And when our powers combine, we are... I'm going to talk about some League of Legends. All right, guys. So I want to begin today with the hired guns of the Summoner's Rift, the 80 carries. They've kind of been making an impact lately. The new patch has seen their relevance increased a bit, and it's a brave new world of builds here. Jat, start us off. Yeah. It's really interesting because everyone's had their first stab with the 4.10 patch. Europe was different than Korea, which is different mm -hmm. than North America. We saw a lot more Tristana here in North America, where it was Kogma over in Korea, and I'm really curious to see where it goes from here, whether it settles down and we end up with another tier of 80 carries like the Lucian Twitch we had all building the same item. But what I hope is going to happen is they'll be picking different 80 carries for different situations and building an item build based on what they need in the game. It's all about how they transition into the mid-game right now. Yeah, I think it definitely got a little bit better in terms of sort of parity and picking different types of champions. I am very surprised at how frequently people are going to Astana. I think she's a lot more situational than three out of four games out of nowhere. If you want to pick a hyper carry, I also think Kogma is better for that right now. And so that's what we see over in Korea, for example. I think champions like Ash and champions like Sivir and Caitlyn as well should be actually higher in the priority tier. And they do different things, which is great. Like, I would love to see more Ash come out there, Sivir comps come out. The final thing as well is I am actually really pleased with the adaptations we've seen from some of the players. The fact that uh, we've seen the Blade of the Ruin King Yomu's Lucian builds, and that's kind of the proper build for him as well, and that's come out already within a week. I think that's a really good sign that there's a lot of smart players here. Yeah, I agree. And one of the things that really excited me was the adaptation of some of the teams, both in Europe and in North America. Teams that commit to the early Infinity Edge, they actually change their strategy to work around it. Alliance in Europe and Complexity over here in North America, they move their AD carry in the mid game up to the mid lane to let her farm through this week period and rely on that late game scaling of the multiplicative power of crits for AD carries. And it's a very good adaptation to change the way that your team will play based on what items you've committed to build. All right, gentlemen, so we put a bit of focus on the items. Let's turn our attention to the players. Freak, we'll start with you. Who's yeah. kind of a standout right now? So Altec, to me, is actually a big standout. So he's number two in KDA in the LCS right now. He's like ludicrously good. And at the start, I wasn't convinced that he was going to be great because when he was on Cloud9 Tempest, all he did was split push around uh, and kind of ignore his team for a while. He played Corky like every single game. And one, I think Corky's worse in 4.10. And two, uh, the interesting thing is, in this new patch, getting a whole bunch of farm on 80 carries is a great thing to do as a team now. And this has all suddenly worked right into his wheelhouse. He's picked up new champions like Jinx to work really well with him, and suddenly Altec's amazing. Yeah, Altex has risen to the top of the 80 carries very quickly here. Something that has been causing the downfall of some of our other top 80 carries has been dodging skill shots. Recently, double lift, and also even a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Wild Turtle. He was having a really rough couple of weeks, and it's pretty much all due to consecutive skill shot CCs landing on him. It just reignites my, uh, the importance of this skill among AD carries, when everybody's worried about builds and what character to use now, this is one of the most important things that AD carries have to continue to practice to stay sharp on. Because 
if it doesn't matter what items you have, if you're getting hit by all these fresh hooks, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Someone who's been sharper than anyone else, though, is Wild Turtle, right? He started the split so poorly. The first eight games TSM played, he had less than two kills per game. Uh, 15 overall. Then his next four, he had 30 kills. And another great game yesterday against Team so, or against CLG, playing up against Doublelift. So Wild Turtle, especially with Glebe, I think may just be the best AD carry in North America once again, which is actually kind of what he was considered back when he entered the LCS, back in the summer split. Uh, at least when he had that strong, what was it, spring split of 2013? He was <laughs> yeah. the strongest. He's been around for a while, and he's finally kind of re-reaching that super top tier. Well, it's a halfway point. A lot of players still have a lot of room to move around, make an impact. Right now, we're going to take a look at the comparative performances of the AD carries after one day on this patch. And it's an unexpected landscape, to say the least. Yeah, obviously just the one game, but you can see really who adapted the quickest to these changes for sure. And people have to remember that even though Doublelift is on the bottom of this one day graph right. here, he is still on the top of the gold generation for everybody. His yeah. gold per minute is the highest in league still, even right. with that bad game yesterday. Yeah, and total kills in North American LCS still double it. Like, he was having an MVP level performance this season, and it's a matter of him adapting to the changes now and not falling behind. Yeah, but that was always the trouble yeah. with Double Lift is he's been really slow to adopt the new champions, adopt the new changes. He thought AD carries were nerfed. We're seeing them carry now in 4.10. He took like three months to start playing Lucian himself. So if he can get up there and catch up, then he'll be fine. But it might take him more time than other players. All these changes. We can talk about the new patch and item changes, but we got to talk about top dogs as well. Dignitas, large, in charge, by themselves now on the top. Are they here to stay? Yeah, the question with Dignitas always is who is Dignitas really? Is it this team that flies by the seat of their pants, doesn't plan anything, and just wins because they're better mechanically? Or is it the team there where Skara tells everyone a detailed plan about what they're going to be doing in-game, yeah. and is actually highly organized, but they just hide it from other teams? They're the strangest number one team we've had in quite some time in North America. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that both of these teams exist. This is a bit of a Schrodinger's <laughs> Dignitas here, because, yes, they are a very strong team, and at some games, they control the game all the way from minute one until the next explodes. However, they still make mistakes, and these guys can make game-losing mistakes still. So nobody is that consistent yet in North America. It's why uh, we really value these teams, like last year's Cloud9 and SKT, when they show that type of consistency and consistently just dominate everybody in the league, that's what's truly impressive. Right now, Dignitas still have a lot of work to do. And the weird thing is, is that they they look so good and then get overconfident over and over again. I mean, how many times have we heard Crumbs say, yep, next game, it's going to be easy. And they just don't do anything at Crush really hard. And I know you talked to him yesterday. very clearly did not say the game today. <laughs> yes. He is done with that type of talk. You tried to fish that line out of him too, like three times. Like, no, 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 I will no longer say it was easy. It's going to be hard. And, and if that actually is the the sort of situation now for Dignitas where they actually respect every one of their opponents, they're going to do a lot better. I mean, this is a team that's nine and four. And in their last game of the week, they're two and three. Like, three quarters of their losses come from being like, well, week was good, guys. Oh, crap, that last game. And so if they can fix that, then they're good. All right, we'll see how rough the road is for the teams this week. There have been a flurry of tweets calling out the LCS big plays. The first is from TSM versus CLG at Mayu Amu Hinamori. Says, the hook by Glebe and the cocoon by Amazing. I can't even imagine how to get away from that. Let's roll your number three. A lot of these alts are back up. Do we have Aphromu in range? Se Seraph again in the fight, taking damage before the team again. really gets it. Double lift hit up, and one after the other, the consecutive crowd control again. Amongst the chaos, he snipes another hook on a double lift, and then they're always doubling it with the cocoon. Yeah, so nice. Just more pain that was yesterday yeah. for Dublin. But he's going to try to bounce back today. Also, another big play from Complexity versus Cloud9. At Jarls P. Lund says, West Rice's flash over wall, then Siobhan Alt into Prowley's Yasuwald. Insane. That was pretty insane. Here's your number two. That was nice. Oh my again. gosh, again, West Rice is just on full initiation mode. Sneaky doesn't even get a chance to breathe along with Lemon Nation. And holy crap, West Rice ran in right there and they pulled off the combo. West Rice's job for the past three initiations has been to attack things and use the alt. They have consistently used it every time it's there. I felt like Complexity all went to watch the sequel to How to Train Your Dragon with how well they could get Shivana to go in there and start fights up. It's wonderful. And of course, our final big play is going to be from EG versus Curse. At Agent AU tweets Pentakill and Surviving. Looks like Curse has just been jinxed. The number five is your number one. 
special. He is doing some good defense for his team, but goes down in the end. They're going to be cleaning this one up. Alltech with a few more kills. A triple kill to end out the game at 7-0-4 on his first Jinx play in the North American LCS. The last shot. He gets double lift on the Fallon. Going for oh! Penta. He gets a Penta oh! kill. Alltech with the Penta kill ending. Evil Genius is coming out so strong here. You know, I didn't even realize I said double lift in that clip. I was just so used to seeing him go down on Tristan yesterday. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Man. What happens when mm, you're commentating? Died on Word soup. Keep your eyes peeled for more unbelievable comments throughout our day. Then share them by tweeting us at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag LCS Big Play so you can read them on air. Taking a look at the standings in North America, we've got Team Dignitas in first with nine wins. It's actually lonely at the top now because just one game back are CLG, LMQ, and TSM. Share in second. Then in fifth, it's Cloud9, followed by Complexity, Evil Geniuses, and Team Curse sitting in last. And then taking a look at what's on tap for today, we've got Cloud9 looking to rebound as they take on Evil Geniuses. Then LMQ and TSM will battle it out, followed by CLG versus Dignitas. After that, Curse will face off against Complexity. But stay tuned for the North American Challenger Series play-in, starting with Maple Street and Team 8 versus Elements and Area of Effect. And since it's Sunday, 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 head over to lolesports.com and vote for who will win. And you can get a high-octane explosion of player stats and VODs of not one, not two, but every single game this year. Or click on the tickets to join our studio audience, and we'll give you the whole seat, but you only need the edge. That's right. And now it's time to gauge your opinions. Today in our Twitter question, we're asking you, who is your mid-season MVP in the LCS and why. Send your answers to at LOL Esports, use the hashtag LCS, and then keep it tuned in right here to see if your answer gets read later on in the show. All right, we've got to take a quick break now while Lemon Nation consults his notebook. When we return, we'll head on to the Rift for Cloud9 versus Evil Geniuses. Keep that browser where it's at.